Hi everyone, my name is Ram El Avram for AE Tats Plus and welcome back to the second part of the color controlled texture and let's first have a quick preview once again of what we're gonna be doing today okay so in the first part we created this texture and for the second part what we're going to do is create the cubes and then add to them expressions which will be connected to a custom control panel which will make it even if it doesn't sound like that a lot more simpler if you haven't seen yet the first part of this tutorial I encourage you to do that right now so you can uh, continue on from this point we'll go back to the to our main comp and first we're gonna need to first thing we're going to need to do is to change the dimensions so control K HDTV 1080 by 25 next we're going to create the cubes so uh, right now I don't need to see the control panel so I'm gonna hit the shy button and hide it we call this uh, texture uh, cube wall or maybe cube side 01 now I'm gonna show you a quick and easy trick to do a three-dimensional cube so each cube has six sides so we'll need to duplicate this five, mo five more times Sorry. and now we're gonna create an all and make it 3d and we'll okay and if we'll go to the top view we'll see the all in the same position oh sorry <laughs> not at all because I didn't make the the wall the cubes three-dimensional as well now if you will go to the top view we will see they're all in the same position and since if you remember the cubes are 400 by 400 pixels we'll move the null on, in the z-axis to minus 200 which will make it the middle of the the middle of the cube so right now we'll connect the cube side 2 3 4 and 6 2 3 4 5 and 6 to the null and rotate the null on the y-axis to 90 degrees now I'll unconnect the cube side 2 and rotate the null to 180 degrees unparent the cube 3 rotate the null to 270 and unparent 4 Now we can't really see it right now, so let's switch to custom view. We already have a cube, but we need to set the top and bottom. So we'll rotate and all on the well, we rotate the y back to zero and rotate it on the z axis. Sorry, rotate it on the x axis to 90 degrees. Sorry. <laughs> 90 degrees and unparent number 5 and rotate we'll to minus 90 unparent the last one and we have a perfect cube and right now we don't need the null anymore and we have this cube one more thing I do suggest you do before going, before going on with this once you introduce light into the scene you can see a 1 pixel gap between the sides and to overcome that mark all of them and set the transfer mode to alpha add which will cover that uh, that gap you can uh, run a test but trust me it works okay so right now we have a cube and let's pre-compose it let's go back to active camera and pre-compose the cube the way I did it is I marked all of them control shift C and I'm gonna call it uh, cube and in here I'm gonna call it uh, cube uh, 1 sorry 
cube 01 in the main comp and to this cube 01 I'm going to actually collapse the transformation on it and convert it to a 3D layer so now if I'll switch back to custom view you can see you can see the cube rotates on the 3D space with just the one layer not multiple but we have one problem here and that's uh, the cube's null sorry that's uh, the cube uh, pivot the center of the cube is right now in the on the side and what we want to do is let's switch back to let's switch to top view if we'll zoom in we want the center of the cube the pivot to be in the center and we have this texture which uh, cuts the cube in half so we can use it let's uh, so I'll press Y and hold the pivot and move it to the center with shift okay let's look at the left right now it's in the center let's switch to custom view and the cube is centered the pivot of the cube is centered okay great now let's switch back to active camera now what I want to do is add another null object new null object call it uh, cube 01 null and I'm gonna move it make it a 3D layer and I'll let's switch to left view again once again I want the null object to be in the center and bottom of the cube so press Y again and let's move it to the center and bottom let's have a look okay great so right now I have a cube controlled from the middle and from the bottom and that's going to come in handy as we move along from with this tutorial so let's first create a new camera make it a 35 millimeters and create another null object make it a we'll call it a cam null okay and parent the camera to the null object we don't need to see it so shy it oh sorry we don't want to shy the cube yet and right now I want to big up a bit make it a, sorry forgot to make it a pretty layer so I'll move back a bit okay and now I'm gonna create and now I'm going to duplicate these uh, cubes and all so duplicate it and move it up just rename this uh, to cube to null duplicate it move it up rename once more duplicate move up rename right now I don't need to see the cubes anymore so shy them and let's move the cubes to the right place cube now first sorry 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 something's wrong here what's wrong is that I didn't parent the cubes to the nose so parent them okay now let's move cube 1 should be around here cube 2 somewhere around here should be fine cube 3 somewhere around here I'm guessing and cube 4 which is hiding okay cube 3 move it to the right all right and one last thing these cubes are all centered in the middle of the composition and I think they can be just around here so you can have a two-thirds sort of thing going on 
All right. Okay, so what we've got here right now is we got four cubes and their nulls. We got a camera and a camera null. And what we're going to do is add uh, an expression to the position and the scale of each of the cube's nulls, which will make the cubes jump up and down eternally in, a, in a, an organic kind of fashion, in a ball kind of fashion, if you will. And we're going to create a control panel, which these expressions will be connected to. And through that control panel, we're going to place two keyframes, a start and end animation to control the animation and that will be and that will be it so let's start first I uh, marked all the layers I don't really need to see and I hit the shell layer so now I can only see the cube nodes actually you know what to make things a lot more simpler I'm gonna work right now on just one cube and I'm gonna shut the eyeball for all of the others sorry I'm not gonna shut the eyeball of the camera and hit the shy button once more and I don't really need to see these so now I'm working on just one cube okay so let's see we need the position and the scale values and now we're going to apply the expressions now the expressions I have to confess are not mine they're Philip Venduren's the creative car leader Philip Venduren uh, positions and there are a lot of uh, expressions out there on the web and I find I find these to be the most uh, useful for me I can uh, manipulate those the easiest way of course you can use this technique uh, to use other expressions you find on the web I find this one the most uh, easy to to manipulate so uh, I'm gonna copy the expression the position expression of course all of these uh, will be in a text file attached to the project folder you can download on the AETATS website on the AETATS website so I've copied the expression to the position and I alt click on the stopwatch and paste it Control V and if I move the slider down the timeline, you can see the cube jumps up and down. And let's copy the expression for the scale value. So Control C and also click on the stopwatch, Control V. And now the cubes, the cube gets uh, squashed and uh, stretched whenever it hits and it's uh, squashed when it hits the ground and stretched in the air midway in the air and that occurs eternally and we want to control that right we want to hit the ground and then start the decay until it goes to a complete stop and here's how we're going to do that actually let's you know what I'll show you a bit of what I'm going to do, going to do to these expressions few words the bound, the position expression the bounce height controls how high the cube jumps and in the scale, scale expression the stretch determines how much it gets stretched and the squash determines how much it gets squashed and i'll show you an example if i'll set the position expression to twice that uh, twice which means uh, 500, twice that amount, it jumps higher. So I'll set it back to 250. And in the scale value, uh, 1 is 100%. So squash 0.5 means it gets squashed to 50% the original size. So if I'll set it to 1, there will be no squash. And if I'll set it to 0.1, which means 10% the original size, it gets squashed quite a bit. And that's a bit too much for us, so we'll set it back to 0.5. Same goes for stretch. 1 means no stretch at all. And 1. Uh, let's say 8 
we will get real stretch 80% and 108% the original size so let's set it back to 1.2 and these values are the ones we're going to manipulate with our control panel so let's create a control panel create a new adjustment layer and rename it to control panel okay and we're going to add to it an expression uh, it will be a slider control and we're going to call this one uh, Q for cube 0 1 oh sorry <laughs> uh, C for cube 0 1 Uh, I'm sorry, I blacked out for a second. Cube zero one uh, height. Okay, and let's uh, reveal the position expression. In the bounce height, I'm gonna mark the value to fifty. Oh, sorry. Let's uh, reveal the expression here as well. I just pressed uh, E to reveal the expression and toggle it down and we're going to mark the 250 and whip and pick whip it to the slider so now the the value of the bounce height is a uh, slave to the slider which is set to zero so there is no no uh, no jumping at all and if we will set it to 409 we get a real high jump, 800 higher, and so on and so forth. So we'll set it back to 250, which is real nice. And that's it for the height. Let's uh, duplicate this uh, this slider, and we'll call it cube one squash squash. And let's reveal the scale scale expression. And once again, mark the value of the squash and pick with it to the slider. So right now the squash is uh, 250, which is uh, oh I'm sorry, no sorry, it's a real uh, squash, and we will need it to be set back to 0.5. okay duplicate again and it's this one will be the stretch value so stretch okay stretch and mark the stretch value pick whip to pick whip it to the slider and set it to 1.2 and everything is as it, as it was before but now we have a, 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 an easy way to control this uh, animation by setting a start value and an end value so this one will be 0 and this one will be 100% and this one also will be 100% and this one will be 0 so we have a decay animation it's not really a start and end, it's more of a decay animation. And that's what we're going to be doing. So right now, if I'll attach this expression to all the cube nulls, all the cubes will jump up and down in the same fashion, and it won't look that organic. To, to make it look a bit more organic, we're going to add another slider and let's just duplicate this one and we'll call this one uh, cube01 wiggle that's right we're going to add a wiggle expression to the cubes no to the cube nose uh, rotation value to the orient orientation actually and it will be wiggle open parentheses 
Now the amount I used was I think 0 0.8 and comma point sorry point eight and close parentheses. Now move the cursor to one step back before the parentheses. Pick with oh <laughs> I forgot to toggle down yeah of course it doesn't work. I forgot to toggle down the wiggle uh, value down. So uh, I'll put the cursor between the comma and the close parentheses and pick with it to the slider. So oh, it's not a forgot to <laughs> a bit of a misspell there. Okay, everything works fine now. And now we have a small amount of wiggle and we'll set it to 10 and you can see there's a small amount of wiggle there which adds a bit of randomization and that will randomize the cubes so they won't look all the same and that will be a bit of a, a bit more uh, organic a bit more organic feel to the animation and now what we need to do is to add this, uh, ex this uh, expression to all the other cube nulls and we don't want the, cube, the other expressions to be attached to the cube 1 so we need to duplicate these as well so let's do this real quick all done <laughs> okay so now let's unshy all the other layers and we want to see the other cubes right and we don't want to see and we want to see the cube nulls so unshy those and hit the shy button once more okay let's uh, move these down now what we're going to do is a very simple technique to duplicate and expressions. Hit U, mark the cube one null layer and hit U. That will reveal all the expressions, all the values with expressions actually. And I'm gonna mark all the values which is position, scale and orientation. Shift uh, or control select them and hit edit, copy expression only. And now mark all the other three nulls and hit control V or edit paste so now if we'll check these out we'll see all the other nodes has the expressions and they all jump up and down in a very nice manner up with and it's recording eternally but right now all the they all uh, are attached to the cube one values and we need to change that and here's how we're going to do it real simple let's uh, start with cube 2 null layer and hit u we don't need your oh sorry and let's uh, actually we don't need to see the screen so let's uh, open this up bounce height equals discount dot layer in open versus control panel control panel and effect the layer that affects it is C1 height C1 height and we're talking about C2 so we'll just change it to C2 thank you and same goes for the scale 2 2 it's that easy to change these, these expressions these expressions and 2 once more and now let's check it out if I'll change the height in the cube 2 height to 0 there's no jumping at all for the cube 2 okay so now we need to repeat this process to all the other null layers so go ahead and do that okay so now I want the animation to start for, with the first cube falling from the sky from zero uh, from point of zero and in one second hit the ground and then 
started decay to from one it will take about three seconds to decay to no uh, moving at all to four seconds so in uh, point one at time i'm gonna reveal the position uh, and then i'm gonna hit the i'm gonna keyframe it and in point zero in time i'm gonna move it up oh sorry let me just get a bit closer there and with the y-axis just move it above so now it hits the ground and boom start jumping okay and let's do that to all the other layers as well cube 2 hit uh, in uh, 2 seconds it hits the ground so in 1 second uh, where's the y move it up and cube 3 in 3 seconds mark it hits the ground and in 2 second mark it's way up there and we can't see it and 4 seconds mark the last cube hits the ground and in 3 seconds mark it's way up in the sky ok how that looks boom 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 real nice but now we want the decay to begin right so let's start with the first cube and reveal the we'll press e on the control panel to see the all the controls we have here and let's reveal all of these at one at uh, one second mark we're gonna hit the layers and now we'll hit u to just reveal the and here we'll hit Oh, sorry. I just been trying to make this uh, simple, as simple as I possibly can for me, because there's a lot of layers here. And so right now, let's see. Fit up to 100. Okay. So the decay should be three seconds. It you don't have to follow these instructions as is. You can uh, have a smaller decay or wider decay. This works for me the best. So at four second at four seconds mark we're gonna zero this out and this will be one which means a hundred percent as we said before. Same goes for the stretch and same goes for the wiggle. So let's see how that looks. It falls on the sky, hits the ground, and starts to decay until it goes to a complete stop. And we're going to sorry. We're going to do the same for all the other non non layers. Okay. So let's see. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. For the other layers, and it should start when the when the cube hits the ground. So go ahead and do that as well. As always, in After Effects, there's an easy way to do things, and there's the hard way to do things. So, to, this, to do this the easy way, let's do it this way. Hit E, and I'm going to reveal the keyframes in the cube 1 uh, sliders. I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to mark the other cube, cube sliders and paste them. And now, right now, all the cubes have the same animation. Well, these cubes are... And all we need to do, since we already decided there's a one second gap between the cubes, is move this, the sliders. You move the, sorry, the keyframes one second down the timeline.
Oops, sorry. I need to move it to Mark 4. So let's look at what we've got. Great. Absolutely beautiful. Let's take a closer look at what we've got till till now. If we'll see a bit closer, we can see the cubes, especially here, they intersect with one another. And there are several ways to deal with that. And if we want to deal with it with uh, expressions, there are expressions out there that uh, repel and repel one another and that means I could uh, attach a null object to this side of the cube and to this side of the cubes and uh, attach them ex uh, repel expression and that won't work but if uh, we want to save time that won't save us time although it will be very cool <laughs> so what we are going to do is animate the cubes to We're going to animate the cubes, but since the position value of uh, these the nodes are, is already taken, we are going to use the cubes themselves. So let's uh, first. We don't want to see the cube nodes anymore, so so shy them and unshy the cube the cubes themselves. Okay. Remember, we have a, a control point from the, for the cubes and for the nodes themselves. And that, this is where it comes in handy. So, at this point in time, they're all gonna, we're mark, gonna to mark their position. And they'll, let's see where they stop intersecting. Somewhere around here. And this is where they're going to be here. So at this point in time, actually that's so we can see what's going on. We're gonna animate it here, but then move it back. So cube one, we want to be around here. Cube two, we're just gonna wider the gaps between them. Okay, and let's uh, delete these keyframes. I need to see this a bit better and move these keyframes back here and let's see how it looks okay the first cube there is first of all there's no intersection but the first cube stops moving in a four seconds mark and here it slides to the left and I don't think that looks that good so let's uh, move the end keyframe here let's see how it looks let me start great so now we have the animation complete so now is the time to add lights to our scene and a background and uh, the reflections and the shadows let's start with the light shall we we don't really need to see these anymore and we'll leave just the control panel and let's start first i'll create a new light we'll make it a point light 100 percent cast shadows i like it to be 70 percent you can uh, play around with these settings and let's move the light to the back and place it in the middle okay and we'll call that uh, front light front light and we'll duplicate it <laughs> and we'll call the other one, uh, we call it uh, backlight or fill light. It's more correct because that's it's what it is going to do. It's going to fill the gas which were 
vanished be by this light. So let's move to the left point of left uh, view, and we'll move it to the back. And let's see, that looks great. And let's uh, make it the fill light. I'm gonna lower the intensity to 80%. That can barely be even 70. And we're gonna increase the intensity to 120% here. It really lets the glow out and it adds a nice effect here. Okay, that's nice. And next we want to add the background and the shadows. Now the shadows are fake. It's not actual 3D shadows. And here's how we're going to do it. First, sorry, first we're going to I like the lights to be beneath the control panel. I always like to keep the control panel in front of everything. So what we're going to do now is select all and control shift C to pre-compose it and we'll call it uh, jumping cubes okay everything's fine everything's fine okay so First, we're going to add our background. So, do you solid? Doesn't matter which color. Now, I use let's uh, call it a background. I used four color gradient. Now, uh, let's see it. When you just apply foreground color gradient as is, it's a pretty cheesy effect, I know but it has so much potential so i used i think uh blues and that's because i really like the blue shades and let's see the bottom should be darker than the top and so it should be lighter and this one can be lighter and I'm gonna play with it a bit. I always like some part of it to be lighter as possible. Yeah, let's leave it here. And this one can be here, and this one here, and let's uh, blend it a bit more. And this one can be a bit uh, darker. That's fine. This one can be a bit darker as well. Okay. Great. This uh, this is our background. And now we need to add shadows. Now, shadows and reflections add so much to a scene to make it so much realistic. And I do recommend to use it whenever you can, of course, if it fits the scene. So, let's start. Uh, create a new solid, uh, make it a dark blue, because shadows in real life are never entirely black. It's always some, uh, some sort of a uh, blue. Okay. And we'll create a... Uh, a mask and I'm just pressing the, I'm just moving the left cursor and I'm pressing alt control shift to make it uh, in the center and perfectly round okay and the mask sh we'll call it uh, cube zero one shadow okay We'll place it beneath the cubes and let's see we need it to be faded out and we'll make it a 3D layer and let's see we want to rotate on the sorry 
on the x-axis to 90 degrees and move it down I'm just going to go to the end of our scene and place the shadow in the correct position I'm going to use the mask I'm going to lower the expansion just uh, let's see and let's lower the feathering something about here should be fine let's move it a bit to the left a bit to the top no, to the right and that should be fine okay so now I need to animate the shadow right it always stays in the same position but let's see in the when it first hit the ground it's the feather and the no sorry we just uh, animated the expansion okay and possibly the position so let's hit you to just reveal the keyframes and when the cube is high up in the air we don't see the the shadow at all so we lower the expansion to nothing at all as it falls it hits the ground when it's in the maximum size in the air we lower the sh the shadow expansion so it's a smaller shadow hit the ground more and just copy paste it again and again till it hits the ground here here it stops moving and paste the keyframe again and there's no need to move the position at all so we'll get rid of that and that's it for the animation oh and we do want it to look a bit better and let's uh, make it a soft light it, and it looks a bit better like that okay now it yeah that's okay that's that really looks good so let's duplicate this shadow once more actually three more times and we call this one shadow 2 and this one will be shadow 3 and this one will be shadow 4 and let's see the animation here now remember that uh, oh sorry the animation of the second cube starts here so we'll move this one here and oh of course it needs to be in the right position let's first move all the shadows to the right position so shadow 2 is here and shadow 3 is here and shadow 4 is here okay so we already moved the keyframes to the to this point that's uh hide those so we can see it better great we don't need even to change the animation so we'll repeat the process for the other shadows the animation for cube 3 starts at 2 seconds and for the fourth cube it starts in 3 seconds let's look how it, let's see how it looks Great, absolutely great. And now we need to add reflections. So let's duplicate the jumping cubes layer and place it below the shadows. We we'll call jumping cubes V for reflection and hit the scale value, unlock it, and hit minus 100 on the y axis on the x axis. Sorry. And we move it down just 
uh, here. Now there is a gap here, but uh, it looks real nice. You, oh, sorry, you know what? We can move it around here and it would look a bit better. And now, let's move it a bit down. And now, what we're going to do is add a. We're going to add a linear wipe. Oh, sorry. Linear wipe. Okay. So at first it does nothing at all. And we'll set it to zero. And let's see where it gets a cutoff. Oh, it needs to be 180 degrees. And here it gets cut, gets cut off. And we'll set the feather to about 150%. And set the transparency to. Well, you know what? Let's set it to soft light. And just look how much realism it adds to the animation. That's real nice. Let's look at it a minute without the shadows and reflections. Looks boring. Looks snapped on. Looks great. Okay. And that's just about it. Let's see if I left anything out. Oh, yes. the In the first tutorial, now if you, you look, there is no, uh, the texture itself, itself doesn't move. And in the first tutorial, we, here's how, here's what's going on here. Whenever the cubes hit the ground, the texture needs to, to change. And it doesn't happen anymore because we change the, the expressions a bit. So to the control panel, hit E. We're going to add a new effect, expression control, color control. And we'll call it start color. No, oh, sorry. Start color. Duplicate it. And we call this one end color. Okay, great. And let's see, let's see, where is that the ramp is where we need to change it. Okay, so let's move the ramp up here. And let's, let's make some room here. Hit E to reveal the That's uh, okay. To reveal the effect, and let's hit you to see the. Okay, so here's the deal. Yeah, of course. Right now, the it doesn't work because comps, jumping cubes, layer control panel effects start color sun start control color. Why does it work? Because it couldn't find the jumping cubes. So let's just uh, reattach it. Take it down. We'll just what? What's going on? Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'll just uh, here's how we're going to do it. We'll set, we'll pre equip the start color to the start co color slider, and pre equip the end color to the end color slider. Okay, thank you. We don't need you anymore. And right now, the it's not that much impressive because it's both red. So let's see. When it first starts, we are to be. I don't know. Let's uh, just uh, do this quickly. And uh, green, and this needs to be a bit lighter. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And that's real nice. <laughs> Unintentionally, that's a bit of a happy accident. So at point uh, 24 in time, which is just a frame before one second, I'm going to move the the keyframes here. And I'm going to go one second later. And that's where it hits ground. And we'll change it to yellow, dark yellow. And uh, oh, I've changed them both together. 
and let's say uh, light green okay and here's another hit in the ground in 124 it's the same it keyframe it again and go one frame later and we'll set it to blue and what goes well with blue red green I don't know just oh that looks nice and let's go to 224 keyframe it again one frame later another hit in the ground and we'll set it to pink wow that's nice and let's make it a bit of orange that's also nice and 324 keyframe it again and that's the last hit in the, of the ground and we'll set it to blue once more just because I really like blue Uh, okay, we will have it like that. And that's it, folks. Every time the cubes hit the ground, we have a color change and a texture change. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Oh, one more thing. There, I, of course, added sounds. And I, these sounds, I don't have copyrights to. I bought them myself, but I can't uh, resell them or redistribute them. So you have to do with sound yourselves. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, my name is Ramin Avram for A Tats. I'm sorry, I forgot one more thing. And that's the final thing we're going to add to add a, a bit of realism here. And that's create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call it Blur. How can I forget about the blur? Now, I can use uh, the After Effects native uh, motion blur, but frankly, I do prefer using the CC Force motion blur. And just look how much more realism it adds to the animation and that's about that's it folks once again thank you very much my name is Ramen Avram for aetatsplus.com I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and many others to come have a good one